हेलो एवरीवन नाउ वी आर स्टार्टिंग विथ आवर फिक्स्ड इनकम ओके सो फिक्स्ड इनकम इज ऑल अबाउट द इन्वेस्टमेंट ओके मींस व्हेन यू आर सेइंग द वर्ड फिक्स्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट और फिक्स्ड इनकम दिस मींस व्हाट दिस मींस दैट यू आर इन्वेस्टिंग a small amount of money you are investing a small or a big amount of money means whatever you are investing but you are getting a fixed income now see there are many ways of investing now what are those many ways if i will tell you the two broad way one is the equity means what you can invest your money in equity in any business with true equity otherwise there is another option is with the help of debentures or bonds now what is the difference between these two i will start with that suppose there is a company name as google now you have 100 dollars in your pocket so try to listen carefully that you have 100 dollars in your pocket and now google have its equity share trading in the market along with that google have also issued the bonds in the market now it's up to you where you want to invest your 100 dollars now you can invest your 100 dollars in equity as well or you can invest your 100 dollars in fixed income now what is the difference okay so difference basically we focus on that how much we want as a return means it is completely dependent on our return requirement means if my return requirement is high if i want a higher rate of return then i must be investing in the equity if my higher rate of return is the requirement i will be investing in the equity and if my requirement is a small amount of return then i will be investing in the bonds now now you will ask me a rational question sir we always want a higher return why we will go for the lower return see whenever you ask for the return or whenever you ask for the risk they both are trading off with each other means if you are wanting the higher amount of return the risk also will be higher if you are demanding higher amount of return the risk is also higher so means what this means is simple that equity is giving you higher return but with higher risk means what the return is higher but that return is coming at the stake of higher risk and when i'm saying the bonds the debentures they are giving you low return but again the risk is also very low so you need to understand the trade off between the risk and return so means what where should i park my money it completely dependent how much risk i can be a now what can be the risk basically if i'm saying okay there is also some low risk but there is also risk means i cannot say that it is 100% or completely free though there are some securities which are free of risk but trust me there is nothing risk free means we always say that we have a risk free rate of return means invest in us government bonds and whatever the return you will be getting the return is completely risk free okay but but if you will see the two government bond say the indian government bonds okay and if i will take the zimbabwe government bonds if i will take the us government bonds so what i will say i will say that you must invest in us government bond if you are in need of the lower risk okay but yes trust me it also include the risk means see every time we say that uh, investing in uh, us treasury is completely risk free but uh, you cannot uh, underestimate the risk here because because there can be chances there can be chances that us government can also default on their bonds there can be chances because no one knows what can happen no one knows 
what can happen suppose a certain situation arise where us government have lost all the money okay might be i am not just saying anything it can be anything but what my point of view is that which i want to say you yes though it is risk free okay it is risk free even in practically nature even in the theoretical but you don't underestimate the risk because there can also be the risk but yes the chances are very low means very very low okay because if you see that if you can say that indian government can be risky then you can also say na that us government can also can also there be some amount of risk might be 0.00001% okay which you don't want to retain okay this is the amount of risk you which you don't want to entertain at all but yes even there can also be the risk so there is nothing in the world which you can say is the risk free means no investment is risk free in the world clear means if i am giving 100 dollars to you now okay to you might be you are the safest heaven in the world but after giving you this 100 dollars something happened to you okay means uh, suppose you are the safest heaven and something that really worst happened in you just last night and it can happen it is beyond the control of anyone so will i be able to receive my 100 dollars back no the chances are quite low so means what there is nothing in the world which is the safe heaven okay but yes with the very 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 low probabilities okay means if i will say that us government is going to default on their bonds and if i try to calculate its probability it's means way beyond the expectation that much low okay so now again coming back to the topic this i have explained you because we are going to study risk free a lot okay means we are going to say that okay let's use the risk free rate of return but trust me risk free rate is nothing in the world clear means there is nothing risk free everything will involve small or a large amount of risk but yes there is amount of risk involved now if you have your 100 dollars and you want to invest your 100 dollars so if your requirement is the lower risk definitely you are going to get the lower return so where you are going to invest your 100 dollars you are going to purchase the bonds in the debentures issued by the google because google if anything happen to the google now if anything happen to the google and they won't be able to survive so who will bear the first loss equity holders will bear the first loss clear so means what all the loss will be bear by the equity so can we say that the bond holders are the safest person in respect of the stakeholders of the organization yes suppose there is a asset of worth say 700 dollars of the google okay 700 dollars is the asset of the google and they have issued 600 dollars as bond holders and they have issued 500 dollars as the equity holders so total they have collected 1100 dollars but because of the loss of 400 dollars now their assets are only 700 dollars so now google want to liquidate google want to liquidate so out of this 700 dollars who is going to get their first money first they are going to repay to the bond holders so bond holder have invested 600 dollars they have received their 600 dollars now what is left 100 dollars now this 100 dollars will be given to the equity holders this 100 dollars will be given to the equity holders clear now there can be another scenario as well suppose they are not left with 700 rather they are left with 400 dollars so now the whole 400 dollars will be given to bond holders whole 400 dollars will be given to bond holders and everyone according to their investment weights will be given the 400 proportionate suppose there is a b c and d suppose he have invested 25% he have invested 50% he have invested 25% and he have invested only 5% clear so 400 dollars 25% will be given to a 
50% of $400 will be given to B, 20% of $400 will be given to C and 5% of $400 will be given to D. Clear? So this is how we divide our money in case of any kind of default. So this is what I am just trying to give you a glimpse idea of what is and why to invest in fixed income. Now, fixed income can be divided into basically two segments. Okay, first you have say hundred dollars and again you have hundred dollars. Now, if you are giving your hundred dollars to bank, what will happen? And if you are going to give your hundred dollars to the corporate, okay, then what will happen means in the form of bonds. So now if you are going to the bank and ask them to do the fixed deposit, you are asking them to make it a fixed deposit. So they said that they are going to give you the return of 8%. They said that they are going to give you the return of 8%. Now, when I went to the corporate bond office, they said that Sir, you don't have to give full 100, you just give me $92 now and after one year, I will give you $100. Try to understand both the theme. You went to the bank and you asked them, Sir, I want to make a fixed deposit of 100. They said, it's okay, give, we will give you 8% per annum. 8% per annum means at the end of the year, you will get $108. But when I went to the say Google's office and I want that I want to purchase the bond of the Google then they say sir better pay us $92 now and at the end of the year we will give you $100 C. Here you are earning $8 by investing $92 and here you are earning 8% or $8 by investing $100. So, which investment you want to invest in? Definitely, I want to invest in the corporate bond. So now, what's the theme I would like to share with you? See, whenever I am going to purchase a bond, whenever I am going to purchase a bond, they will say that, sir, this is my bond. Okay, what are the things written in the bond? Sir, this is the face value of the bond. Now what is the meaning of this face value is what you are going to get at the maturity means when it will mature what you are going to get. Next what is the price of the bond? What is the price of the bond? Now try to understand one thing in the bank what I am doing in the bank I am giving them the money now and what they are giving me? Money means my principal plus interest. Clear? So now, here I am giving them 100. So they are giving me 100 plus 8. But in case of bonds, what is happening? What I am going to get in the future? That is sure. Means in the future, I am going to get the $100. That is for sure. Now, what I have to invest today? That is the price means they are selling the bonds. Now tr uh, try to understand if I am going to sell a pen if I am I am a pen seller and I am going to sell a pen first I will sell the pen and then I will buy the pen back from you means what? A is the pen seller A is the pen seller okay he sold the pen to B Okay, and B is the buyer. Now, why A sold his pen to A? Means, this is not his trading business. But, suppose uh, a pen is the asset for A. And that pen is very costly for say, $1000 pen. Now, this pen A wants to sell. Okay, A sold it to B. Now, B, after one year, giving back the pen to A and taking his money back from A. First of all, A gave the pen to
to B and B gave one thousand dollars to A. Why? Because A is in need of money. Now, at the end, at the end of the period, A will give say eleven hundred dollars to B and B will return his pen. Now, what he did? A took the money. He used in his business when his task is over. He repaid the money as well as he paid the interest on the money, as well as he paid the interest of the money. Now, now, with respect to pen only, I have used two values. One is one thousand value, and the other is the eleven hundred dollars value. Now, this is the current price of the pen. and this is the face value of the pen you need to understand similarly similarly when i am talking about the bond when i am talking about the bond i am quoting 98 dollars i am quoting 98 dollars and i am saying that okay after one year you will get 100 dollars so means what this is the price of the bond paper now suppose this is a bond paper and i am giving that bond paper to you now how much i will take from you i am taking 98 from you and when i when you are going to return me that bond paper how much i am going to give you i am going to give you 100 dollars now a b a is the google and b is you so first what will happen a will give you the bond paper and you will give to google 98 dollars now this is on say 1st january 2020 now at the end of the year means 31st december 2020 what is going to happen a and b now a is going to return 100 dollars and this 100 dollars is pre decided and what b will give that bond paper Which issued by A to B. Now B will return the bond paper. Okay, take your bond paper which you have given it to me earlier and give me my money which you have promised to give. Means what? The future value. Okay, the promised payment, the principal amount is fixed in case of our bond. The future amount is fixed in case of our bond. And sometimes we call it as the face value of the bond. means you cannot fluctuate the face value of the bond but yes what you can fluctuate you can fluctuate the price of the bond you cannot fluctuate the face value of the bond but yes you can fluctuate the price of the bond means what suppose now i am selling the pen okay it is for sure that i am going to buy back the pen from you in 1100 dollars now tell me what is the price today are you ready to pay for the pen whether it is greater than 11000 equal to 1100 sorry greater than 1100 equal to 1100 or less than 1100 then definitely your answer will be less than 1100 now wh why is the reason means what if today you are going to purchase something in less than 1100 and then after a year if you are going to sell the same at 1100 then you are going to make a profit means suppose you are buying something at 1000 and you are selling it back at 1100 so you are going to make the profit of 100 dollars you are going to make the profit of 100 dollars so this is nothing basically your cost price and this is what your selling price so now low selling price is fixed you need to ensure that your selling price is fixed now if you want to increase your profit what you can do you can decrease the cost price if you want to increase your profit what you can do you can decrease the cost price if my cost price will start increasing my profit will start decreasing now the cost price of the bond is dependent upon the many factors cost price of the bond is dependent upon the many factors and the most important point is the risk most important point is the 
risk. Now, how the risk is playing a role in my profitability means what? You are the pen seller and I am the pen buyer. Clear? Now, after a one year, I have to sell this pen back to you and I will take the $1100 from you. Clear? Are you getting this? Now, now you have to understand that if there is a risk, if there is a risk and risk of what? Risk is that you are not going to repay me that $1100. You are not going to repay me the $1100. Suppose or if you are going to repay me $1100 but not the $1100 but say $900 means now why are you going to do that means rather than paying the promising $1100 you gave me $900 why because you had a huge amount of loss in your business that you can't repay means what who have to bear the loss I have to bear the loss and when I have to bear the loss means what there is a higher risk and when there is a higher risk I expect for higher return when there is a higher risk try to understand when there is a higher risk what I am wanting I want the return to be higher and now just now I have said if you want your return to be higher you need to decrease the cost price you need to decrease the cost price so what will happen the price of the bond will be lower price of the bond will be lower in case of high risk and price of the bond will be higher in case of lower risk. Now what will happen in risk that I am going to explain you now. A, B. Now A promised that he is going to give $1100 but now this is 31st 12, 2020 means the end of the year when A had to make his promised payments to B and B need to return the pen to A. Now B is ready to return the pen to A. But now, but now A has suffered the huge amount of loss. A suffered the huge amount of loss in the business and he is paying only say $700 to B. Now he is paying $700 to B. He is making the loss of $400. Who is making the loss of $400? B. How? A. Say received $1000 and now he is paying only $700. So means what? A make the profit of $300 and how much you are expected to earn? $1100 but you have received the $700. So there is a loss of $400. Now apart from this it includes the $100 which A needs to give that is also including inside the profit of the A because if you have to give something but you are not giving means what you are retaining that and when you are retaining it this will include the part of your profit here. So Google and you. Google promised that I will pay $1000 at the end of the year if you will purchase if you will purchase my bond okay now the bond is say trading at $900 the bond is trading in the market at $900 but now you verified the bond of the Google and you say Google see your bond seems to be quite risky to me. Your bond seems to be quite risky to me. I am not going to pay you $900. I am going to pay you only $850. Even if you have paid $900, you are going to receive $1000 in the future. And even if you are going to pay $850, you are going to receive $1000 at the end of the year. Now, what will be the profit? If I talk about the profit, what will be the profit? See, basically profit is if I am purchasing at the cost of 900, my profit is 100. If I am purchasing at the cost of 850, my profit is 150. Clear? So means what? Here I am getting the higher amount of return. In this part, I am getting the higher amount of return. Why? 
because the cost price the price at which i am purchasing the bond is lower as compared to the price which is trading in the market that means what i am purchasing the bond at the lower cost my profit my return will be higher clear so this is the whole theme and i have just given you a glimpse of idea about what is the fixed income is all about clear so don't take it that you have understood the whole fixed income this is just a glimpse of idea that you are going to get a fixed amount of income what is that fixed income this is the fixed income today you are giving 850 dollars and now you are sure that after the that after the year will end you are going to get 1000 dollars means what this is your fixed income but if you are going to invest 850 dollars in the equity it can reach 1200 it can reach 1000 dollars it can also reach dollar 600 means what you are not sure what you are going to get but in the fixed income you know that there is a fixed amount of money that will come to my hand at the end of the year or better to say at the end of the period now period can be one month one day 14 days 15 days 30 days 6 month 5 months 30 years 100 years also okay there are companies which give the bonds for 100 years as well okay coca cola is the one of the example who are issuing the bond for 100 years okay so i have just given you a glimpse and the basic idea about the fixed income in the next session i will move on with the basic details of the chapters we will solve few of the sums so that we can get the idea about the topic next make sure that you have the good idea of the time value of money means you are comfortable with the interest rate because if you are not comfortable with the interest rate portion trust me the chapter is going to be very difficult for you okay but if you know the interest rate portion very well trust me i will make this ch chapter very very easy for you okay so i end this lecture here thank you